Hi everyone, welcome back to Adobe Live on Behance. We're back for our second day to talk, to talk about designing for any screen. Um, I'm Sharif, I'll be your host today, and with me, Gaitri Gaikwad, who is a product designer in Adobe XD. Hi everyone. Uh, before, I, before we start, I just wanted to give a shout out to Anna and Ellie's career building session. It was awesome, great job guys, with all the insightful nuggets around how to build your portfolio, build your career with Instagram. If you have missed it out, check it out on Instagram later. For everyone tuning in, let us know where you're from. I'm here from San Francisco, originally from Egypt. Gayatri? Uh, not originally from Egypt, from uh, New Delhi, India, but we're both in streaming live from San Francisco. Yes. <laughs> hello, Richard. Hello, Nicholas. Hello, Anna. So like usual, we have our daily challenges, XD daily challenge that's going on. Thanks, Melody, for the great work for setting it up. We're going to talk about it shortly. For you as well as our chat and win, that's going to be in about 30 minutes. So stay tuned, stay engaged with us in our chat. So to get the opportunity to win 100 free 3x3 die cut stickers from Sticker Mule. So to learn about more about our daily challenge today, go to the challenge tab on Behance. And what is our daily challenge today, Gaitri? Do you know? All right. So the prompt is when customers order food to the wrong location, they must contact customer service causing delays and dissatisfaction. What can we add to the experience to prevent this? Oh my God, that happens to me it's embarrassingly a lot of times. You know what? That's happened so many times in my apartment where I'll just see food outside someone's apartment for like <laughs> four hours. Do you take it? No, <laughs> I haven't. Because at, at that point after four hours, you're like, is it good still? Like, I don't know, it's been out yeah. for too long. What if it's seafood? But it's like, I keep sitting there and I'm kind of just like, every time I, like, I'll leave and I come back and the food's still outside, I'm like, this person sent it awesome. to the wrong address. All right, so you guys have an hour, 30 minutes to work on this challenge, on that prompt. We're really excited, Gaitri and I, to actually start to review your submissions and give you feedback around it. Um, so back to you, Gaitri. Um, for those of you who didn't join us yesterday, we were talking about designing for any screen and Gaitri has shown, worked us through her thought process, but why don't you just give us a quick intro about yourself for those right. who are just new to joining us today and talk about what you have uh, what the design yesterday and your thought process for designing for For sure. Yeah, so uh, I'm an experienced designer on Adobe XD. I've been on the team about a year now. Um, Sharif and I work together as a team um, and, and we just worked on, if you guys haven't checked out, linked assets. I should actually show a demo of it today. Yes, absolutely. Um, you can check out some of my work online on Behance, of course. And if you have some questions, uh, feel free to DM me on Twitter, and I'd be happy to answer some of your design questions. Let me know what you want to find out about career-wise, design-wise, living in San Francisco-wise. Um, so yeah. Um, so yesterday we went through uh, a little bit about um, defining a user problem around taking care of the plants that you have at home. We got some awesome recommendations for different features that we can have, different notifications we can have. We also talked about how you can get started um, yeah. doing a little bit of sketching. Um, we talked, I defined why I would like to have the app. Um, that you have 30,000 plants in your I wish I had 30,000, but right now I only have 15. <laughs> uh, but more plant, well, more plant gift welcome. The more the merrier, uh, yeah. we love plants. So I wanted to define how exactly um, I would think this app for would work for me um, when when basically when can I water my when should I be watering my plants diagnose what is wrong with my plant and lastly how I can be a better plant parent so it's kind of a plant nursing caring exactly app. I think I feel like there are so many online plant selling websites these yes. days it's kind of the trendy thing to do but a lot of the times I hear people say um I just hope I don't kill it. I hope I d it doesn't I die. I killed a bunch, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. And, so, and and apparently the only ones that work for me are succulents because yeah, I you would have to kind of water forget it. About them. Yeah, literally but water it once a week and be done. I'm done. Well, actually, I did that, but sometimes overwatering can make them bad too. Uh -huh. So this is 
what's wrong with this one? This is what I it was seen. like when I first got it. <laughs> but basically, I like gave it too much love. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, watered it too much. Sometimes too much is this too much. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I did some sketching. This was just to show you guys that you should kind of put your thoughts on some kind of a wireframe, artboard. Um, we whiteboard as a team ourselves when we're sharing ideas uh, because sometimes you can get caught up in the little details when we are uh, making the designs. Hi, Chris. Hi, Howard. Hi, Howard. How are you guys? <laughs> um, you guys, if you uh, are new here, you should definitely look at some of the tutorials Howard has. I know I actually, no. even though I'm a XD designer, I spend a lot of time looking at some of his videos Abs because he does some cool Absolutely. Stuff. I don't think if you're new into XD, there's no better way to start than going to letsxd.com. I mean, Howard has so many great resources on how to get started, the pro tips. Howard is, I mean, he uses XD in crazy ways that even we as product managers yeah. and designers, you don't think about it. It's like, how, how did you do that? Yeah. And it's really <laughs> nice to have them recorded on YouTube so Absolutely. you can stop and follow and uh, pause where you need to. Um, so back to our project. Um, so we did a little bit of competitive research, and I would I will say that competitive research doesn't really end at the beginning of your design. Once you make your work, you might find inspiration from a lot of different apps. It doesn't have to be a plant care app. All right. Um, so that's where we left off yesterday. We did some. You of started working on some designs, right? Yeah. So this is where we kind of um, made some wireframes. We showed you how you can take some of the designs and turn it into by using responsive resize. Uh, how you can make those assets work for different screen sizes. We also also showed you how you can. Um, for those of you who haven't weren't with us yesterday, we used CC libraries to bring in some of the assets, assets from, from Adobe, Stock, from right? Adobe, Adobe Stock. That's right. You can just drag and drop them in here. Um, and we started defining a little bit of a design system. So I went back home and I um, did a little bit of homework. I started thinking about, finished off a little bit of other thinking about like what kind of colors we should use. And I didn't do this in isolation of um, the the actual screens. I actually took one of the screens. Um, so let me put it next to it for comparison. Actually, here we go. Oh, I needed some wires and stuff like that. Yeah, I was so I think that's one of the powerful things also Got it. about XD is when you're designing, you don't want to design it in isolation yeah. of what the next screen is going to be, and sometimes just like adding one more click gives you an idea of Just to see the, the flow and the experience exactly. going back and forth. Yeah, um, I So um, I, I don't, don't remember if we talked about this yesterday, but... We don't talk about um, grids, yeah. Um, so I use pretty simple grids, but you can set up the grids over here and when you select the artboard and you select the checkbox here and say grids, you can select by column width or by the four sides of the margin where what uh, spacing you would like. I've used 11, 11 on left and right side. How do you normally decide what are the spacing and margins that, um, and gutters to, that you want to use? Honestly, though, I haven't done a mobile app in a while, but um, back in when I, I think I use grids most heavily in mm -hmm. InDesign. Um, and I kind of, once you do it a couple of times, you just remember like by 12 by 8 grid or something for a certain kind of kind size of, of paper. Yeah. But I think. It's totally available online. Google the mobile size. What is the ideal grid size? Yeah. Um, I kind of just looked up something online and based on that kind of made a guess about what would be appropriate. Of course, you don't want everything to bleed into the margins, leave some room for the person to be able to, user to be able to sc scroll. Exactly. And things snap, start snapping to those grids, exactly. right? Exactly, yeah. Um, so yeah, grids are definitely super useful. And you can, one of the nice things was that you can mark uh, whatever you have created. Um, you can the mark default. them as a as default. And you can go into another artboard and there, you can apply it and it will all get applied as you use, you nice. can use default. Or and like, then do you combine that with Guides or um, for this project, I haven't. But I think if I was guides become even more uh, useful when you're actually, I might have. I don't really remember. I might have. Um, 
but they become more and more effective as your the number of your screens increase. Yeah, um, right now we're working with a not not that much of a big size of uh, at, we have like what one two three four screens. Um, so for that I've been able to get away yeah. with uh, layout grids guides. I haven't really needed yeah. that much. Um, and guides is actually a new feature that we just introduced in XD. Exactly. In the main and release. for those of you wondering how to get them, if you just scroll up to the edge of your artboard, you will see this double arrow, and you can drag it out. Actually, and this is how it's uh, useful too. So you can see that I've like made some changes. You can gu guides are also great to check consistency mm -hmm. in your older designs. Mm -hmm. um, of course, you don't want your grid to be on all the time when yeah. you're working, and you can even turn off um, hide all the guides. So and the shortcut for that is Command colon. Um, Got it. And there you can turn these off too. So going back to some of the design decisions I made while I was kind of, you can see that there is some similarity still with the stuff that we had done yesterday. Um, uh, it, there's a lot of, with the way that I had set the wireframes up, I all I did was kind of add in a little bit more images um, and maybe add in a little bit more color. As I was saying, I kind of defined the design system over here and just started playing around with what the little accents of the design system would look like uh, alongside the app over here. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of wanted to wanted it to be a little bit retro, so I chose like this kind of neon green and pink because there's gonna be a lot of like that dark green already in the app. Um, besides that, I haven't kind of gone too, too crazy. I left that for now. <laughs> um, so you're using those as your color templates, the one you've defined on those artboards. You're going to apply them to your components. And yeah, exactly. And I actually have already gone ahead, I believe. And well, I haven't. So yeah, I'm ready to define this as one of the components because I've only just used it in one place. And definitely this plus sign is something that I've uh, already created a component of, I'll just call it add symbol, so in case mm -hmm. I'm searching for it. Um, so there we have it, we have one of the screens ready. So I think one of the places that we left off at yesterday was um, how do we use data outside of XD yes. and populate those into the assets in XD. Um, I'll and you showed you. us the repeat grid, right? Yeah, uh, we went through the repeat grid as well. So um, one of the reasons why, uh, while I was trying to figure out what was going wrong, um, I'm sorry guys, I didn't know that you cannot apply um, the Google Sheets plugin to components, but once you have this defined exactly the way I would suggest you to work, or you guys might have suggestions of how you might want to work with this better, but you can define um, your asset on how you want it, want it to look, and then I would define them as a component, or actually you don't even need to define it at this stage as a component. If you wanted to do a repeat grid, you can just create, and there you go, you can create a repeat grid out of these assets mm -hmm. and what I would do is also turn off repeat grid and when you're ready I, usually when we want to populate um, our components or assets with data from my outside we've already re reached a place of um, completion with yeah. our design and you're just trying to show or test how some of this information is going to hold up and uh, you can do this through so there I have these things set up um, and in the layers panel, so for each of these assets, um, in the layers panel over here, I've named this type box plant name. And the thing below it, I've named it scientific name. Um, maybe I should take a step back and tell you where this came from. If you remember yesterday, we had created this page which is the page where you can add your plant in. And we were kind of joking around and we were saying, maybe you should be able to name your plants. Yeah. Um, and 
we should also all, obviously provide the scientific name of the plant as well. Um, so that's where this is coming from. So once you put in this information, this is how the information would get displayed in kind of like an index page, which shows you a preview of the plants that you mm -hmm. have. All right, so as so you your next step is that you want to auto-populate exactly. the names of those plants? Exactly. So we're going to take a detour here. And here I have um, oh, interesting Excel sheet. Um, That's a Google sheet. Exactly. Any Google sheet, as long as it's a public link, it should work. Uh, well, first of all, what you should do is go into plugins. And if you haven't already gotten it, get the Google Sheets plugin. Um, you can get this from Discover Plugins. And I think if you write Google Sheets, it should pretty easily yeah. show up right there. Yeah, you can um, it. So yeah, make sure you download that. Um, and it's going to ask you to uh, sign up with your Google account, mm -hmm. uh, just so that it's linked to your Google Drive or Google Apps. Um, it's a pretty straightforward process. And at this point, you could choose any of your existing Google Sheets to link exactly. to. Exactly. Um, what I would I would say is that you kind of keep them right next to each other, so that you know what's named yes. to what, so you can match the names. That's, that's a good pro tip in there. And it doesn't matter what order your um, I would say it doesn't matter what the columns in exactly Google what columns it's in, as long as you know what the name is, so that you when you go back, I'll just show you. So I've set this up. I kind of just gave some names to my plants. Mm -hmm. You kind of see my cre creativity, um, and then the scientific names. So I go back to my app and I select uh, the assets where I would like to, to map this data to. Um, so go into plugins. Go to Google Sheet and say paste public link. Um, the way you can get this public link is if you go to share, get shareable link, and it's copied to your clipboard. Got it. You and then you paste it. Paste it over here and you say continue. Mm -hmm. It's going to see, so it matches, uh, as you can see, it matches to kind of the, the co columns. columns that I've named here. Mm -hmm. So um, scientific name matches to scientific name. Plant name matches to plant name. This is why I was saying it's effective to name your layer name and your column name the same thing so that you're not trying to figure out what was what Got it. over here. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And if you have image URLs in your Google Sheet, right. I believe it will auto-populate them exactly, as well. Exactly, but it has to be a secure HTTPS. Got it. Um, I have not. I have decided to not do that because obviously we uh, use some images from Adobe Stock, yes. uh, which is a great resource. So you can kind of have ownership of where you can bring those assets in from. Um, this is also something that we've been exploring for ourselves about where do people bring in different assets, assets from. from. So tell us, where do you store some of your creative assets? Do you just drag them from your desktop most of the time, or do you use yeah. libraries? And and just to build on what Gaitri just asked, so where do you bring your assets from? How do you organize them? How do you share them? That's really would be really insightful because we want to know how could we optimize and improve that workflow for you guys. And honestly, it, if you don't have a process, it's totally fine. Yeah. Um, plugins like this will kind of give you kind of a pathway to start organizing some of your things. Um, but don't feel pressured to organize stuff. I know I get a little bit hassled when I feel like I have to, you know, put everything in clean, neat little rows. Design is a messy process. Yeah. And you can all, d don't worry about going back and redesigning a version of the yeah. screen or the fifth, sixth, seventh version of the screen. Um, we have many people tuning from different places. Vlad from Denmark, Snal from India, Richard from Aquinia, I think Nigeria. So Snehal's definitely from yesterday. Thank you so much yeah. for tuning in again. Fabio from Brazil. Abdul Majid from Nigeria. Whoa, John shout John from out New to Jersey. Nigeria. Oh yeah, that's uh, quite a good. Yes, uh, from so all over the place. So Vlad, yes, you can uh, use JSON format from an API and work with live content. I will get tell you where to get that in just one second. Let me finish this. So once we finish, we map this and you hit apply, and there you go. It maps to wow. all the content. Magic. Uh, that I have right there. What if you updated the names over here? Would it? So maybe we our dangler is now like five years old and it yeah. has become 
got a PhD in college, <laughs> Dr. Dangler. <laughs> yeah, we, we brought that idea of celebrating uh, birthdays, birthdays and maybe degrees in yeah. the future. <laughs> <laughs> so we call it Dr. Dangler because maybe it's an older plant that you have. Um, uh, so you go over here, um, go into Google Sheets, and I believe if you say refresh content, it should show up. Oh, maybe I need to f save it here first. Uh, does it auto save? How does Google Sheets work? It's, yeah, it auto saves. Yeah. And then go, I think, go to the plugins. Um, once you go to the plugins, you should From be Google able Sheet to say refresh. refresh content. Oh. Did it refresh? Maybe it's taking a bit longer. Oh, well. It should technically update. Yeah. Unless there's a magical save button that we're not hitting. It's what? cloud document it should just. Yeah, command S. Uh, I think it saves. Yeah, maybe it just takes the time to um, for it to reflect. We could try What if, w I mean, let's try this one more time. Um, Google Sheets, public link, continue. We're not gonna change anything, apply. It doesn't wanna update. Is it? Oh, well. There's a, maybe it's a, it's a special character? Like, does it not take the period in there? No, that's there. Dangler. Actually, we're probably not helping the situation by <laughs> like changing it so many times too. Oh, or um, one of the things that might be happening is Refresh. Oh, there it there it goes. It's refreshed. It's refreshed. Yeah. There you go. Here you so are. So refreshed. So you could always keep update the Google Sheet as your source of truth for the data and right. refresh it from there. So yeah, I I highly recommend this kind of style of working at least initially when you're first setting up uh, your uh, Excel sheet to map content. Uh, across your document. And this is also a great way to collaborate with your content, um, content designer, strategists content and strategists, designers, yeah. and some of your other team members who might, you, you don't, you don't, you can, can put some placeholder text and they can and always And they can have their own space and then yeah, populate and it when you're ready. Exactly. Um, but we also might be having some further improvements where you can Absolutely. work with some of your collaborators. I'm sure you guys can guess what it is, but <laughs> <laughs> we're really excited over here about some of the new improvements we're, you're going to be seeing in the upcoming months. Yeah, so speaking of content strategies, jumping into XD file, one of the main things that we're working on for this year is live editing. So multiple users could jump into the same XD files. They could do multiple edits. So think about Google Documents the same way where you collaborate. We're going to have the same thing for Adobe XD. I'm, I'm personally super excited because many times Guy Tree would share with me a design file, like, I want to go and change things. Obviously, she's not very excited about <laughs> me changing things in her files, but... Yeah. <laughs> 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 we went towards that, <laughs> Guy Tree, right? Yeah. And it's like, Shreve, save your own file. I don't want to see your changes in my file. Yeah, but. well, I mean, I guess um, that is also, like, I'm sure that you guys do this too. It sounds like a great idea to make those changes. But as a designer, there might be some smaller things or the way that you've structured your components that might break. And it's great to have your collaborator come in and work with you. But sometimes, um, that's why also maybe having design systems is helpful, but I guess I'm getting away from myself. So once yeah, you're going to talk once, about like yeah, consistency once someone, exactly, and Exactly. Once someone edits your files, once you go back, you don't know where they put what. Yeah. And then you start making more and more and more mistakes. So it's kind of like a barrier for like save your own version so that you don't mess up the original version. Yeah. For sure, back up your files also with cloud documents. Um, we've it's really nice that a lot of our stuff gets automatically sa saved. But we also I every once in a while when I'm like making an important presentation, Absolutely. I always save a local version on my desktop. Just to just as a designer, just because I'm superstitious, it's happened to me many times where like my work has gotten lost. Um, all right, so that's how we populated some of the assets. Going back to somebody's question over here, I wanted to quickly talk about, um, of course, I can't go through all the details of how to uh, add in data from different sources, but there's a great tutorial that Damon, um, Damien Borba, 
created for XD. Um, it's if you put in Adobe XD uh, plugins, Google Sheets, or Data Populator, um, you can easily find this video on YouTube. He also has some great. Um, Sample files Dean that you is can, awesome. yeah. yeah, you can work with. Actually, in one of our first creative jams, we got to see Damien do some really cool presentations around design thinking and human centered design. Exactly, yeah. and uh, it was one of both our first creative jams. And actually, one of the days we were decided to be brave and do it ourselves, and we realized do you it's want to so talk much about harder. creative jams. So, for those of you who don't know what creative jams are, we. Um, so we visit the different cities in the US and t this year we went to Europe to multiple cities and I think it's called Creative Jams Adobe. Uh, yeah, so we uh, meet up with the design community in those different cities. We invite thought leaders to talk about their design process, their projects, like and start and doing a design uh, competition and have some judges from the leaders in those communities to give like some thoughtful and thoughtful constructive feedback for yeah, the designers it's, there. It's a great like about a two hour competition. Then you come into teams of two, you get a topic and you use XD and prototype. It's a good time to interact with the app and also uh, get your work features yeah. uh, featured on different uh, web, uh, different sources and get feedback from people. And fun fact here. Actually, Gayatri got her yeah. job at Adobe through a Creative Jam. Yeah, I'm a Creative Jam hire. Very proud <laughs> of it, too. Uh, I competed in one of the co competitions, mostly just to create a portfolio piece for myself. But I got to meet my future manager uh, at one of the Creative Jams. And it was a great experience. And there are some great, If you, even if you don't want to compete, it's a great networking event because they bring in local design leaders and they give a couple of talks about yeah. design and UX design. So it's a great little thing. Uh, keep on the lookout. There are events happening locally. And if, um, if you want Creative Jams at your cities, just ping us. We're going to do our best to come and visit you guys. Yeah, tweet, uh, yeah. tweet us on um, Adobe XD. Yeah. And All right, so that's that. Um, so that so definitely, if you are wanted, there's def. I know for a fact that there are some JSON files and stuff that, um, and even like Data Populator, which is a plugin with which you can pull data from existing websites. Um, this is a great resource to be able to do more mm -hmm. of that. I just showed you a quick uh, little snippet of what is really possible with some All of right, these plugins. So let's talk more about what what's next with your designs here. So All now right. you've populated the data. Right. You have the images that you grabbed from CC library. Right. So um, since we were we were talking about designing multiple screens, I want to talk about how you can resize something like this as well. So if you if some of you are new today, we talked about this yesterday as well. So if you hit the A key uh, on your keyboard, you can select from the right hand panel what kind of screen you want to adapt this so design those to. Are like Default I, like templates for different um, surfaces or mediums. That I would say, d yeah, default artboards for, yeah. that uh, you can use. So let's use one of the iPad ones over here. And of course, guys, like it's never going to be perfect in the first time when you're trying to uh, resize this, but you can always start over. So you take all the assets that you've designed over here and you put it into this new artboard. And just to help you get started faster, so you can kind of start stretching out some of these assets. Now you're seeing that some of these assets over here are not stretching, and that's because there are some constraints that have been manually set on those. So I can go in over here and select them, and go into manual and change this fixed, fixed width. width. Yeah. So fixed width is right. What does fixed width do? So sometimes you might want to set some constraints on how like the height of things change when you're pulling them from like one corner and stuff. So like Got they it. will behave differently the way. It so it, so fixed width pretty much it stops from damage from scaling, right? Exactly. It just maintains the aspect ratio. Of it. Exactly. So you want to select uh, unselect fixed width, and let's see if that made things better for us over here. So they did, but then oh. remember we had set set a. It's repeat fine. Works bridge. time. Yeah. Wait, hold on that. It's oh. fine. Works time. So okay. it's our chat and win, guys. Why don't you tell us um, what 
Where do you, okay, so actually before we start, I think there's a video that's going on, right? We're back, guys, <laughs> and for the next minute, why don't you tell us where do you get your design inspirations from? Chat, start chatting. Within a minute, we're gonna, our bot is gonna choose one lucky winner today. Who's that gonna be? Tell us, where do you get your inspirations from? Where do you get your inspiration from, Gaitri? Um, You know what? I think I get it from a lot of um, Pinterest, I that love I, Pinterest. Uh, that I look at. Oh my god, the number um, of boards you get to create. Exactly. <laughs> and also it depends on what I'm looking inspiration for. Um, I'm sometimes uh, get in, in inspiration if I'm thinking of a solution, get it from like some other app that's not even a design app yeah. that has a little feature that lets you, uh, you know, use your application in a certain way. Yeah. That's sometimes you're kind of like, mm, I wonder if we could apply this to XD in some mm -hmm. way. Some ups, some people are saying Behance, yay! Dribble, yeah. Dribble, Google. Go I totally agree. Google is great for uh, figuring out like certain screens. Yeah. And we have a winner, David Yamis. Well, congratulations! You have won with us 100 free three by three die cut stickers from Sticker Mule. For the unlucky ones today, you're still winners with us because definitely apply to the daily challenge. We have a deal for you: ten stickers for one dollar if you go to stickermule.com backslash Adobe Live 19. And yeah, that's awesome. Actually, I want to go grab some of those. Wait, stickers. so tell us, tell me about your stickers. What kind of stickers do you have on your laptop? Me? I just have XDCC. XDCC. I have the Adobe Design sticker. Yeah. And yesterday, I was given one of the... I love those. Those are like... Adobe Pride sticker that I was, that I was given yesterday. Yeah. These are really pretty. Yeah. We need Pride more stickers. Land. I feel it's... Yeah, it's, it's empty. All right. Anyways. Okay, so where were we? We were talking about resizing... The some grids. Of these yeah, yeah. So you did the fixed width. Part. I fin fixed the fixed width. There was, um, so one of the cool things is if you have this set up as a repeat grid. Thanks, um, Voodoo, for putting the link. Oh, thanks, Voodoo. Um, once you have them set up, you can copy and paste them onto your artboard mm -hmm. over here. And if you, I applied repeat grid over here and it behaves a little bit differently and you can decide how you want to work with it. So let's see what happens. So this is one cool thing that happens with repeat kit. It's smart Got enough it. that it remembers that you might have set up, um, you might just want duplicates of that artboard. But if you don't want duplicates, you just exactly. ungroup the grid. And yeah, you can turn it off over mm -hmm. here. And we'll do the same thing again. We'll copy paste it. And then just stretch it out. Oh, nice. I like that. Yeah, all the images. That is neat. Yeah. And you can see responsive resize kicking exactly. in. Exactly. And of course, like, you know, th some things will not work perfectly, um, but you can go in and make some customizations. So maybe this is a point where I want to apply repeat grid and nice. I add in one more like layer that. of things. Um, there you go. Um, it's kind of modified a little bit for iPad. Um, this resized pretty well, but there might be some things that I, I might want to go. this is where go. the fixed constraints you could Yeah, fixed constraint or you can yeah. definitely go in or and just, kind of yeah. like put in some of your more individual touches, um, show how this might look. Mm -hmm. um, this is also actually, since we're talking about changing how people design for different screens, I think we should also talk about when do apps always turn into websites or not? And I was thinking about this as we were designing yesterday. And I wanted to kind of uh, t take a little bit of time to like talk about what is the experience like when you're designing a web uh, website versus, versus an creating an app. And um, I found this really good art article on Medium by Lucas Imrich, who is also a UX designer. Um, but 
I'm just taking some snippets out of his article. You guys should definitely go check out the article online. I'll post some of these slides after our live on my Twitter. So you guys can definitely go and check out some of these um, articles. Um, but basically apps, I think are more task oriented. Um, where you can kind of work with them offline. You don't necessarily need to be online and they're tailored to what you might want to work with um, or like set up alar alarms, check the weather or have a plant yeah. app which where you can kind of customize your information. Whereas I find websites as more typically of source of information. Yes. Um, a, a way we can kind of, well, a clear example of something like that is perhaps um, the Uber app. Yeah. The Uber app is very different on your phone versus if you went to a website and you typed in Uber, they mod me. It might probably have like a company featured post or like something about their to hire page yeah. or some latest news about their company, some photo galleries, social media profiles, like all their trending posts on a website. Um, so yeah, I wanted to kind of like put that out there, like websites and apps are two slightly different things. but responsive resize kind of is in the middle a little bit. It could work for both. I mean, you could start with a mobile app and responsively resize that to an iPad or mm -hmm. to a bigger surface, which might be a website. But And you could go the reverse with starting the web website and then yeah you can narrowing definitely that make down a, Yeah, you can definitely iPad make or, a website into a mobile website. Yeah. That's, that's, but a mobile website is not an app. Yeah, they, no, those I totally are two, agree. Those, two they different have things. different use cases. I I look at mobile apps as something that is very handy. It's very like you have a lot of proliferation uh, from a brand recognition. You are in marketplaces. Everyone could review it, and everyone could easily install it from wherever they are. It's and much more powerful. It accesses the data that's already available inside your phone and inside your device. Exactly. So even and if you're you offline, might, exactly, you, know, you, you could, never need you to be still online. do some functionality with exactly. with your app versus on a website. You're pretty much limited on exactly. Your so yeah, um, be intentional. Don't always convert an app into a website, think about what the use case would be. And since we're talking about designing for any screen, I thought it would be useful to talk about this as well. Um, all right, so, so which is why we're also, Sharif and I are being conscientious and designing for an iPad rather than saying that it would be a different website because I think that could be an entire segment of its own, yeah. designing a website. Uh, I can almost imagine this being uh, some kind of like a website where it's more yeah. trendy articles or buying plants. Yeah. So we got a feedback from Vlad saying, saying the pink button is unreadable. Yeah, exactly. I saw that. Did you use, did you try this dark plugin before? I have not. Should we try it live? Yeah. It's Disc always dangerous to start trying <laughs> things live, but you know well, what? We've let's been do doing it for, it for two, two for days. The, yeah, yeah, for the fun of it, let's install the Stark. Okay. What I love about this Stark is it gives you accessibility information around your designs. For sure. So go to the plugins again. And choose Stark. Check contrast. Is, yeah. Is that what we're doing? Yeah. How, how do you apply it? I don't know. Oops, no flip corner. Do you have what? Ooh. What do you select? Did you select the component or? I selected the component. Should I select the entire artboard? Yeah, let's try that. Okay, let's do the mobile one. Um, plugins. Stark. Stark. Check contrast. Yeah, I think you need to s just select the component itself. Yeah. Okay. And check contrast. Should it be a component? Or the layer? It's, there we go. Oh. Ooh, mm, there here we, we go. are. Check contrast checker, large text is da, 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 contrast normal test. Oh, it failed a lot of tests. Is yeah. that what it's telling me? Mm -hmm. Jeez, so harsh. Thanks, Vlad, <laughs> for your feedback. It seems that Gaitri needs to do some adjustments <laughs> in her designs. All right, um, cool. And it's the size. Yeah, it failed the size and oh, it's yeah, the it's, contrast. It's, it failed yeah. more of the size. Yeah, point, uh, point size six is typically pretty bad. Uh, yeah. It's really, it's like almost, um, 
on sides of containers and stuff. If you see, it's like like the disclaimer or the copyright in light gray is usually yeah. that. And so, you know what I like? If you could show again the historic mm -hmm. for a second, if you choose the entire artboard. If you choose the entire artboard, it yeah. does nothing. And then go to historic. No, do color simulation. Color simulation. So it would just simulate those, just use the different colorblind types. It will show you how oh, it looks awesome. like for different people with colorblind types. It's it's amazing. I love like how that is just a very you know easy what? I think, accessibility yeah, feature I think to know how you could improve your designs for all different, your older audiences. Absolutely. I would with. check it with a smaller artboard type um, just because that's, like, make, be careful that you're not selecting something too big, I think, to check yeah. this. You would just need a little bit. There we go. And yeah, if you, all of these all the most common. All blind types. Yeah, yeah I think there might be more, but yeah. these might be the most common, common ones, ones. Yeah. Uh, where you can check if all your text is still readable and legible. Yeah. Um, Seems like we're doing pretty good here. I think that's one of the key takeaways also. Um, in general, as a design principle, you want to stay away as much as possible from text, white text, uh, that's also small, on colored backgrounds for buttons and stuff. As accents, it's fine. Um, I think most of the time people also recognize is it a bright button and yep. not read what's inside it. So yep. be intentional. So, all right, awesome so let's try know. to get a better score on this um, uh, stark contrast thing. So right. one of the things that I can do is because I, I, I applied this from the color character styles. And if I want to know which character style I use, I can right click and say reveal character style in assets. And as long as you have the assets panel on, it'll highlight it mm -hmm. over here. So one of the neat things over here is that if I make an edit over here, it'll uh, populate across. So I think I want to make it 10 because 10 is usually mm -hmm. what books have uh, as a legibility size. So there we go. It's there. It made that change. And now it's going to populate all over across everywhere. So everywhere where you had this character style applied. Exactly. Um, but I want to adjust the master component over here. So um, I will. Right click. Oh, that wasn't edit the master. component, is it? Oh, and yeah. the master is somewhere else. So I want to make sure I'm going to edit the master. I think it might have been one of these screens that I was on earlier that I was messing around with. So make sure you're working with your components model. Um, all right, let's go back. So edit master component. There we yeah. go. That's the master. Um, and now we're going to make some quick edits so that our work stays consistent across. So I'd like to fix this a little bit more. Maybe, um, maybe just maybe we just say the word overdue. Yeah. Um, so that. It, and then it will reflect in all other component instances. Exactly. Yeah. Um, all right. So there we go. I think I want to definitely fix the spacing over here a right. little bit. It looks a little. So out. for everyone online, we have 46 minutes to go to submit your um, for the XD Daily Creative Challenge submission. Our prompt today is when customers order food to the wrong location, they must contact customer service, causing delays and dissatisfaction. What can we add to the experience to prevent this? Thanks, Melody, a lot for putting the starter file together. It was awesome. So Gaitre and I are really excited to wait for your submission. So you have 45 minutes to go. Do it. And you could share that on our Discord XD channel. And Gaitre and I are going to be looking and at all your designs. All right, I'm seeing in the chat, uh, I think Vlad, you're making some really good uh, points over there. I would, I mean, just as a disclaimer, I wouldn't, yet, of course, use the Spark plugin um, as the kind of be all end all. Of course, a lot of these apps before they get launched should be user tested. Um, should not just be kind of made in a silo. Spark yeah. will definitely help you get 
there a little bit faster in your own work process and check a little bit of your pitfalls, but of course don't um, rely on it. And design is an organic process. You're always going to be fixing what you've created. Absolutely. Two days later, you might have a better idea and you might realize something mm, that you... Think about the number of iterations we have on any of our feature designs. Exactly, yeah. Um, you think it's a simple fix and you come back and like you show it to five people and they, everybody uses it slightly differently. They almost differently. have that like kind of a design sprint. So we get the features obviously after validating the user problem with our and coming up with a bunch of concepts. Then we start validating those early concepts with our users and then we start designing that we actually start putting pixels together. And then we do iterations every single week with our customers to see if actually we are First of all, if it's achieving the functionality that they want to achieve with that feature. Second thing, is it intuitive? It's discoverable. And yeah, and then we keep iterating until we reach um, a point where it's actually satisfying almost 90% well, of our customers. Exactly. Yeah. And I mean, even after we've built it, it kind of lives in a um, testing kind of like dev mode Absolutely. for a while. Um, and even there, we do spend a lot of time fixing a lot of the bugs. But yeah, thanks for bringing that up. I think um, color checking for things like contrast and the si contrast is created by the size of the text and the background that is behind it. Um, so making sure the contrast, the way you're observing the entire screen makes sense and is usable to users. Um, definitely. Um, is an important thing and you should keep checking that with your different different users for sure. All right, so there we had we made one screen for the iPad. We've been looking at the screen for a while now. <laughs> I'm start I'm ready to kind of start designing okay. a more detailed screen. Um, let's do it. Um, but what's, what's up next? All right, so I've taken one of the other uh, images say from here mm -hmm. that we had created earlier. Um, I will copy that and I put it pasted over here. And so it kind of reuses that little section. Um, and once so it once you open the details section, it could say something like when it when was it last watered? It was last watered like. You know what? This is also a great opportunity to use the Excel sheet that we've created. So do should we be brave and like try to use it again? Do that. Um, so it was last watered, say June. Oh. June. Come on. See, now Google doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Not XD. Okay. Oh well. Okay, there we go. I had to refresh it for some reason. Google, Google was not happy with me. Okay, June tenth, um, twenty nineteen. Um, so it was last, maybe we'll just add details for just one of them. So June 10th. Did you put the day or just like how many days? Like five days ago, two days ago, more than X days ago? Yeah, Do you care a, about it, the exact date or? We should ask our chat. Do you guys, yeah. what, what do you, do guys, you guys think? think? Which one is more effective? Uh, is it, it the date more effective or like five days ago? Because it could be like a month ago and yeah. um, but I mean, it depends on the other use cases, uh, of course. Um, so we'll put the date in for now, just just because I thought it was more accurate. Yeah. Uh, next, so the next watering, next. So I'm gonna next watering. I would be like tomorrow, maybe. Um, and then we remember we had talked about where is this plant, you might have a lot of plants or you might have it in multiple locations you wanna put in where the location is. And we have a little plant bio section that I've already kind of populated over here with some data that I found online. Also guys, there's a huge part of this background research that you spend outside of XD where you'll be Googling a lot of information, looking at competitive research, looking at Wikipedia articles to gather your information, especially when you're designing an app yourself. Um, so yeah, account for that time when you're actually um, making an app by yourself and you're trying to learn XD. Um, having a Word document or an Excel, even if you don't use the plugin to populate those um, in your design, definitely account for that as well. I had to kind of pre-homework some of, some of yeah, this stuff. Yeah, that's really important to have a coherent design process in the end. 
it's a very initial, important initial step. Right. Um, so we had something over here. Actually, all right, we had this. We had this group. Now I want to make sure that this is aligned to the assets that we're going to pull in from here. Katie likes the XX days ago instead of the day. See, I'm the winner. <laughs> I'm kidding. Last watered. Um, and then there is. Mm, there is this one. Next watering. I know guys, this is looks like a long process, but I'm telling you this. I wonder actually, I'm thinking about it. The more and more I think about it, what if you could see a week and Sunday, Monday, Tuesday? Uh, that's for like, what if you have a certain schedule for your plants? You could. Like every, you need to water them on Sunday, Tuesday, and Thursday maybe, or something like that. Yeah, we can totally even think of a, like a calendar-like exactly. experience for exactly. sure. Um, all right, so hmm. hopefully this will work. This is some live like creation of Excel, but I think this is definitely a great plugin and worth figuring out. So this is the same link. I'm gonna continue and I think it's trying to like think a little bit. Okay, yeah. so see the new columns that I've created. So let me remember what I did, location. So you need to make sure that the layer name is the same, Exactly, right? yeah. So I'm mapping the names to the mm -hmm. layer name. Um, all right, let's see. Oh, wait, I did one thing wrong and I know exactly what it is. Um, okay, there we go, Call Google Sheets. Continue. I agree, Voodoo. Yeah, I like that. Maybe you could choose a day, week, or a month schedule for each plant because there are different species and they have their own schedule. So, yeah. Oh, location, location. I don't need no mapping over here. Richard, what do you like about the new components model or things that you want us to enhance in it? All right, plant bio. Plant bio paragraph. I think it's taking again time to load. <laughs> you have to like it saves over here and then it populates yeah. over here. We can move on. I mean, you yeah. can keep, keep designing and for sure. So remember, we had created these components earlier yesterday. This is again how assets panel becomes really powerful. Mm -hmm. um, if you so we had, remember we had defined a design system earlier over here, but we haven't really decided a blue color here and I think we need to add a blue and a yellow yeah. for our designs and these two blues and yellows don't really kind of work, the two that we have created here. Especially, let me bring in these assets so that you guys can see it better. Maybe we can define these components better over here. And there we go. And there we go. All right, so this one was this color and this one was this color. And I think we need to kind of fit into that little um, color tone over here. I'm gonna wing it a little bit and I'm gonna edit um, and just go into the color scheme a little bit. I think it's more of like a brighter cyan blue kind of like that. I um, that color. And yeah. as you can see, when I change this color, see how like that color droplet and even the colors in the asset panel. I can't. So every <laughs> color that has this color applied to would change exactly. pretty much. And that's like the power of the assets panel is that it, it helps you with global editing. You do it once and it propagates through all your designs. I like Eric Sue. I like everything about XD. Oh, mm -hmm. thanks, Eric. All right. Keep telling us well, how could we improve it further for you and your design process. Um, all right, Voodoo, I agree. Nice earthy colors would be really nice too. But I spend my my day job is to design a lot of things that are like pastel blues and <laughs> grays. So because I'm getting a chance to des design something completely different, I'm kind of having you're, a you're going rogue. I'm today, having huh? a design party in my head uh, <laughs> with all these bright colors. All right, so I created like this kind of neon blue blue over here. Also, it's summertime, so yeah. I want to have slightly brighter colors. It's pretty warm outside. 
All right. So if you, for some reason, if you had, if you couldn't tell the difference between the different yellows or whatever, you kind of go uh, reveal color in assets. And this was the yellow that we had applied. So if you go back to assets over here and you select um, <laughs> option, right click. <laughs> and so right edit. And we're trying to look for a yellow that matches our color scheme a little bit. Of course, yellow is a tricky color to oh, wow. use going back to accessibility. Exactly. Um, so I wanna use a yellow that's a little bit kind of on the um, darker side and not mm. too neon so that it has better contrast with the white that's going to behind, be behind it. So I think maybe there is not a bad idea. Maybe we can use Spark one more time to check if it's going to be visible or not. And maybe we can just do it even just with our uh, design system. Okay. Oh, how did we do it again? We were in Go design. to plugins. No, okay. yes, like the artboard. Plugins, start color simulation, and see. I think we're doing okay. Yeah. It's definitely very close to another color over mm. here. Um, the green, for yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, and since we're not finalizing this design system, we can definitely come back and fix it. I would probably even uh, go as far as to edit it. Maybe you can even add like a little bit of pattern into um, like great like lines or something yeah. into the way that have adding some textures into it might definitely help. All right, so we have a yellow defined, which is now magically changed all the other components that mm -hmm. we had created yesterday. So now we're ready to kind of go in and add them in. Oh, actually they're already added in uh, over here for us. I'm gonna use, um, I have decided that this pathos doesn't really need much sunlight. Actually, I have a golden pathos. So I know exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> um, so it doesn't need too much water. It needs like just about some water yeah. and low sunlight. I think just having these color, uh, one of the other ways that you can come overcome accessibility is that n even though you have um, a icon, you can supplement it with Absolutely. some text next to it yeah. as well, and that will get the job done yeah. for sure. Um, I think that's a like good best practice, anyways, for accessibility in general. Yeah, um, it. I guess it would be like low water or less water. Yeah, and it should be like low sunlight. Okay. Or maybe like you have daily, weekly, monthly kind of describing how often you should water. Yeah, Your so plans. actually, well, this it, we kind of defined it over here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, But just in yeah. general, like if you wanted that to kind of have sense. a yeah. sum summary. Um, I'm seeing that there is something happening over here that I'm not, I'm gonna. Is that gonna, from the Google Sheet? Yeah. I'm gonna quickly see today. Um, what does it say? I might not have named the la layers co correctly. Um, watering scheduled. I haven't. I don't think you had your watering scheduled there. Next watering oh, tomorrow. Next watering. Yeah. And I'm gonna check the layer and it should be, I have to map it to one and it should be called next water. Um, gonna go to Google Sheets, go in here. And then, sh seems like yeah, because you have it already up there. There we go. Yeah. I think I've I've confused myself by naming the layers too much, and I'm glad <laughs> this is happening a little bit online because because that's really what th happens. That's in that life, act yeah. that's actually what ends up happening. And when some people are like, I use this plugin and it doesn't work, it's usually <laughs> that somewhere you've complicated your design and your layers are not named mm -hmm. right some troubleshooting yeah you definitely need to some spend some time and try to like try again and try one more time so i think this this one came through um and there all the data came through this is the only one that hasn't come through yet so let's see what this layer is called it's called plant bio paragraph and over here it's called the plant bio so I'm gonna just call it plant bio paragraph two just so that. Hi back from New Zealand. 
it's it's morning in there. I think it's tomorrow or it's something. already tomorrow. Yeah, you yeah. guys are ahead of all of yeah. us. How is tomorrow, Beck? <laughs> <laughs> is tomorrow better day than today? <laughs> um, all right. So then, la one last time, you'll see me do this like Google plugin thing, and then I'll stop. You're addicted to this. I it, know. I think I figured out how to make it work, <laughs> and I started applying it to everything. But there we go. Hey, Sharif, I'm just trying to collaborate with better <laughs> with my <laughs> with my teammates. I think now both of us should co communicate exclusively yeah. on Excel. That's where you'll find me. Um, sorry, I'm just being nitpicky over here, and I've decided that this is a better layout. I agree. Than what I we like had before. <laughs> Greetings from the past, Pluto. <laughs> All right. Okay. Guys, why don't you tell us what is the most fun project that you've worked on and what was fun about it? What's the most fun project you've worked on, Gatry? Like he, at, at No, in general, not, not necessarily at Adobe. Um, what was the most fun project that I worked on? Wow, that's a hard one. Like it, there I'm, are many? Do, no, well, like I'm just trying to remember all the projects that I've done. Mm -hmm. I think one of the really, it's not a UX design project, but I collaborated with this Swedish artist once, and it was a really cool uh, installation uh, design project. But he was an artist, but I had to kind of think of the user experience of it inside our office building. Oh, interesting. Um, and that was kind of an interesting user experience. So how would people come to discover it exactly. and engage with it? And yeah. the way that the artists worked, I should tell you a little bit about that. They used everyday items to create structures. Where, so if you were coming in from a distance, it would just look like a wall. Mm. Um, but once you kept walking in closer and closer, it was made of like laptops, notebooks, refrigerators. <laughs> it kind of just like <laughs> compacted in. He would not use any art materials. It would just be like everyday things. Interesting. Um, um, so I had to kind of bring in contextual meaning, and that's the user experience of it, right? Like when you're walking from the distance, you kind of see it as like this bright, colorful wall, and yeah. when you come closer, you see all these tiny details. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's that fun. was a very different but fun project. Yeah. Let's see what you have. Children book with my sister. That's awesome, John. I would love to see that. Um, you should definitely link some of your work here yeah. if you want to share it with us. Vood is working on some video game menu UI. That's pretty using awesome. Using game pad triggers. Oh I my god, I love the game pad triggers. I have not played it around with that. Um, you have to play with it. Oh, yeah. Just let's check what Howard has been worth tinkering on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's going to blow our minds. <laughs> uh, Sharif, is there a favorite project that you've worked on? Uh, let me think. Um, would have been my favorite project. Yet to happen. Of course, all no. the projects that you worked on with me. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. That's a no-brainer. I wasn't going to start there even. <laughs> no, my favorite project was actually putting together my the, a photo book that I published about the Egyptian Revolution. Oh, that's cool. So yeah, back in 2011, I collaborated with five other photographers to make a book about the Egyptian Revolution and the journey around the 18 days. Okay. And that was a pretty interesting project because it documented kind of a historical moment in our country. And actually we were we were able to collaborate with my undergrad university to publish it, and it's being thought of, it's being used in some of the history classes today. Well, so, that's really cool. Yeah. So you did tell us yesterday about how you like photography, so that kind of was a yeah. good that circle was, of all your interests. Exactly, yeah. That's kind of nice. I, have, I haven't done any personal projects recently, but are there any personal projects outside of UX design that you guys are? I think my personal projects are my plants <laughs> right now, honestly. Yeah, let's, um, let's, get to, let's keep <laughs> getting care of them. We yeah. have 25 minutes to go for everyone out there. Please make sure that you get your submissions for the creative challenges. Our prompt is when customers order food to the wrong location, they, mu they must contact customer service, causing delays and dissatisfaction. What can we add to the experience to prevent this? 
Awesome. Um, so I want to quickly also jump to prototyping uh, because we haven't covered that yet. And 25 minutes is perfect for us to kind of go over that a little yeah. bit. Um, so, so if you select the artboard, remember uh, Sharif had given us a pro tip about if you just name your layers hide, um, you can find whatever you've hidden. Yeah. Hidden and before. I, use, I actually use that for annotations as well. Sometimes it's like if you want to tell a story, I put them in separate layers and I hide it and then I show it for before if if you want to share it with others to start telling stories about the flows i see i do i use that but yeah what we're working to on annotations i can talk about it <laughs> so all right so if i do that you see how it showed up this it's kind of a little bit hard to see but um we've hidden some of the features over here um so all right um we can bring this back up so if you select the object and you say hit shift command open bracket on the right hand side it'll come back up and this blue line is where the screen of the actual uh, phone would end as you can see over here this little mm -hmm. gray box over here um, we should go ahead and apply uh, some of the colors that we had kind of Absolutely. set up earlier um, one of the things that I have not done I think is add these colors in to my you already have some of them added exactly I have some of them added i one of the other things that you can do is reverse check if you have any of these and so i've applied this so i think i can delete this one because this is not used mm -hmm. in my color system anywhere um i think this gray do is you want a neat thing could you do command z i'll give a pro tip for everyone mm -hmm. so copy the hex value of the color that you wanted to delete Okay. And right click, edit. Um, sorry. Yeah, right click, edit the other one. Okay. Edit. Paste the hex value. But I don't want that yellow. Oh, no, sorry. You so mean copy the other this way around. Got it, yeah, got yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Got it, got it. You you mean copy, copy paste this one, it here. Paste it here, here. and it's going to merge both colors. Got it. Yeah, that's another way of making sure that uh, you don't. Uh, so essentially what that will do is replace any of the other instances exactly. of that's pretty neat actually like yeah. replace all the other instances of that instead of just disconnecting them yes from so this it, it makes sure that all those yellows or automatically inherit that yellow instead of you going and trying to find them on canvas got it so you go and make sure you guys go into the edit guys because if you go and paste it over there it's just going to yep. rename the color and here you are color merging <laughs> yeah so actually we kind of technically already do have color merging um if you really think in some in some sense yeah. uh in xd um all right so we have all our colors over here if i might say so myself i think they look beautiful <laughs> all right so go ahead and come back to our little panel over here um and i think Maybe it can be... What colors do you think it should be? Nicholas is facing some issues. XDS crashed, cloud fine. Nicholas, I would say if you could reach out, um, I'd probably need to try to restore it, XD, if it still doesn't work. Um, reach out to our community channel on Adobe XD and we'll be able to resolve that issue for you. We're probably gonna get logs if we need yeah let's go on um if it was saved as a cloud file you can always open it's, it's gonna be there it. yeah it should be there yeah it yeah. will be there um all right so i've recolored my little bottom nav over here um so let's try to link maybe this page and this page together it would be a pretty basic interaction but essentially this is more of a detail page so on right over here you have prototype and this is a nice thing about xd i've said this before you don't have to be completely done with your designs to start prototyping interactions so i've already done this a little bit i'm going to remove it for now i'm going to take um dr dangler over here and add it to the auto animate. I'm um, let's see what happens if I do auto animate over here. So what does auto animate do? Could you just briefly tell us? I think I would define auto animate as if you use two of the same 
ar uh, objects um, and you change the size and width of the other one or you have some common assets that you've used on two artboards and you wire them up together XD will smartly create the interaction screens to show it as an animation when you ah, click so the first yeah. one and go into the second yeah. one. Uh, so it's a pretty neat way to kind of add some extra transitions and like make it look more finished. Yeah. Um, what I like about it is that you don't need to be trained about animations or as sophisticated XD users. All what you need is just to name the layers the same thing and do transformations on the separate, on the other artboard. Exactly. And just wire both artboards and choose um, auto animate and it would, XD will do the magic for you. If you want to learn more, again, go to letsxd.com. We have Howard Pinsky here, the master of mm -hmm. auto animate. <laughs> he will show you all the different tips and tricks around auto animate and how could you use it in your designs. For sure. So there you have it. This is, um, uh, I'm. For those of you who kind of might have missed it yesterday, what I did was I made this uh, element fixed width. And this is something that you can do in the design mode. So select the component that you would want, uh, want to be want to be a fix width and go in here and check this box over here on the right hand corner and make it a fixed width. So when you do go into prototyping and you go into previewing, oh, wrong artboard go into previewing the artboard, this stays fixed. And since we had wired this up with auto animate, um, let's see what happens. There we go. So it, that was pretty smooth. That was a pretty smooth transition over there. It kind of like dissolves in mm -hmm. to the I section that. that we have yeah. over here. So I will admit that this is like a little bit hard to read over oh, here. Oh, it's had a really back hard. Back. Yeah. I can't see anything. And back. I'm having a little bit of a, you're right, Voodoo. I have like this crazy design party going on with the pink and the greens, but oh well. <laughs> oh well, it's summer, right? It, whatever. <laughs> um, <laughs> I like it, so I'm <laughs> gonna do it. Um, I like it so far, but I think it would drive me a little bit insane if I was using it every day. True, um, true. You need more salted colors. <laughs> exactly. So um, I have to go fix these colors over here. I'm gonna make these white. Um, I had used a, com I had created a component over here, so I think it's time to replace it. Um, I can either copy paste it from here, or I can add it in from my assets panel. Um, Make sure you add it into the right group. Um, these these automatic guides are great because they help you center a line to your uh, assets over here. I think it's a little bit hard to read, so I'm gonna try to see if we should and add the, a little bit of Even the menu shadow. bar, mm -hmm. I think if maybe you should give it a background, like a white background um, or something. Uh, right, this edit button? No, no, even on top, the menu bar with the signal and the battery oh, and the right. time. Um, um, for sure, I think I had created this as a component as well, so I can actually make an edit to this as a color. Um, so uh, what, this is actually a great uh, point to like this new feature. This is a very tiny feature that shortcut that XD has come up with, which I've been using quite a lot. If you hold on Shift Option Command, you can make multiple selections within different groups. Mm -hmm. um, but right now, I think this is just one s small group it's all together yeah. so i won't need but it but you could you could do that across different groups exactly so that. here i needed to do that because this was mm -hmm. not a separate group so if you hold shift option command your finger is going to look like this your claws right? <laughs> yeah you your the claws, claws <laughs> keyboard <work that. laughs> yeah and you're going to hold it down and select the color that you want to change it to and boom there you go you don't have to like come back and unselect yeah. multiple times um, this is one of those places where we can use guides um, so to make sure we're being consistent. Mm -hmm. um, you know what I like also about this problem? When you actually copy and paste a component from an artboard and paste it in another, it would be pasted in the same exact location. Yeah, that's, that's so true So that's too. also one quick way of doing it. All right. Why can't I see my guides? Am, is it because I'm in a different you, mode? You, I think you... They're hidden, right? Didn't you oh, hide them? Oh, good point. There See? We go. Uh, again, the shortcut for that is command colon, and I think the shortcut is the same across um, Illustrator and InDesign and XD. Um, so that's really helpful. 
So you bring in that, so it's on, let me see what access that one was in. It's on six, 16, so I can adjust this to be. I think it's trying to snap. Exactly. Close enough. Oh, there yeah. we go, 16. Kabam. <laughs> okay, there we go. Great. Go away, guys. I don't need you anymore. Um, <laughs> all right. So I think we need a little bit of a background for this arrow that we have created. Mm -hmm. um, I would copy the same green and try to bring it here. All right. We have 15 minutes left for everyone, again, to submit uh, for your daily challenge XD submission. Again, last time. When customers order food to the wrong location, they must contact customer service, causing delays and dissatisfaction. What can we add to the experience to prevent this? We're so excited to review your work. Um, this edit is a little bit hard to read as well. Do you think I should put it behind like a... Yeah. Um, or maybe uh, edit can be somewhere here. Um, Maybe it's like in the corner over here. Again, use. Uh. And maybe use an icon instead of edit. Would, that would. is actually a good idea. Yeah, right? Mm hmm. Like the pen icon. I love using that one. Uh, edit. Oh, that's oh, you didn't highlight that today. It's like so that's one of the neat I'm like plugins. I'm repeating everything. I did yeah, today. one of the neat plugins that Gaitri used yesterday is like an icon plugin where you could just search for any icons and. Um, there we go. Yeah. Why fix something that is not broke, right? Exactly, and give it a white. And there we go. Fill, and that's it. Oh. And that's the I keyboard shortcut, which mm -hmm. is one of my favorite shortcuts in XD. So that is the edit image icon right. thing. Pro tip, guys, I think if you're like struggling with it, with your assets not being readable, um, feel free to add a little background to it. Like a, yeah, a background like or, over. or a shadow even. Yeah. Um, which we're not going to do right now because it's seeming to be too complicated. Okay, there we go. Um, one of the things that I also, there we have it. Um, this is a better transition now. You can, this is that we have a fix yeah, with and if you I click like on that. that, it transitions over. Oh. Maybe we can also wire it back such that it comes back from this back icon over here. And that'll be like a quick little transition over here. You click on that and you hit back. It all comes back. Yeah. Um, one of the things that I wanted to talk about was a little bit of an onboarding experience. And I was thinking about how to go about this. So in how much time do we have? We have 11 minutes. So yeah, 11 think, minutes. Yeah. I think we'll be able to do it. So this was a quick trick I figured out this morning when I was kind of messing around with it. And if you guys are kind of strapped on time or like thinking of a cool onboarding experience, this is something that you can do if you have like one long, big, essentially what I have over here is a long <laughs> image yeah. like that. Yeah. And I've just pieced it together on different crops on each. You started each, masking it? Yeah, differently? each artboard. I actually haven't even mastered it, I just placed it. Got it. I'm Because I'm like trying to kind of hustle over here yeah. a little bit. So, and I'm using like these little circle colors just because they are like visually cool. So what I'm thinking of them as is like these four onboarding schemes. Sometimes when you download an app, you kind of see what it's about before you for mm -hmm. add your information. And I was, Again, I haven't finished designing the screens, but I just wanted That's to great. see if this yeah, this kind of works or not. So let's see if I like wire this and this maybe say like a drag, auto animate again, um, do something like this. It does like this cool transition. Yeah, I like that. It's like a cool auto animate kind of thing. And maybe you can, this is a good opportunity to kind of use some of 
like a app branding type of thing mm -hmm. um, that you can do. I don't want this border. Maybe like just a little bit. And maybe make this a little bit brighter. Play around with it, have fun. I think these are the parts in your design where you kind of can. One of the things I want to, want to ask you, how do you, okay, so now you defined your assets and everything. Yeah. If you have other designers who are gonna work on separate parts yeah, of absolutely. the flow or similar projects to that, how do you reuse those assets across different So now bars? that I've created, like exactly, I've created all these assets, maybe, well, guys, we haven't named it. Still, Plant Nanny. Plant Nanny for now. Uh, it's called Plant Nanny. Oh, app. Okay, all, it's really fast. If I'm working on figuring out some of the last touches and I have another design designer join my team and I wanna be able to share some of the assets uh, with them, I can go, e like now that it's saved as a cloud document, yep. all I need to do is go to share and, uh, it, with me. and I can invite to edit. Sharif, everybody's gonna know your email pretty soon. <laughs> Ooh, no, 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 do no. it fast. Okay. I hope you share it mm -hmm. with my Adobe? Adobe. I'm pretty sure I did. But of course, I mean, maybe I wanna work on a V2 of this project as well. Yeah. And um, I start a new project and I just wanna be able to reuse some of my assets. So I start a new design file. It's a completely empty new design file. And you go see this like little button which says, get started by linking assets from existing mm -hmm. cloud documents. That's exactly what we did, right? We made a cloud document over here. Yeah. So you hit linked assets and it's gonna find all the other assets mm -hmm. that you've worked with. So there's the plant nanny app yeah. that we worked with. Um, there you go. You hit click and is added all the assets from that design file, all of them over here. And, and I can get multiple uh, cloud documents. So if there was another cloud document. So you could have some, maybe your colors in one file, exactly. your components or whatever, the way you organize your exactly. assets, you can yeah. link to multiple you documents. You could bring it in from any section. And what happens if you update in this verse? So document? one of the nice things also is that. So if we update the green color, for instance, that is yeah. in a bunch of the um, components. Maybe I Why don't you apply drop? it. Yeah. Uh, maybe I apply the yellow over here, right? Or drag some of the components. Exactly, and then we, using some of the components over here, we move this and we'll just, it'll show the color transition and the thing. So, yeah, so if I green. make changes over here on the master. To the green, no, just change the green color maybe. Um, on the colors, the color swatch. The that's assets. a simpler yeah. one, yeah, exactly. Yeah. When you hit edit, uh, maybe I change it to like a, maybe let's make a bright red, just so just, you all know. Yeah, First so of all, you see all the changes propagate across um, different parts of your app. But since it's a cloud document, it auto saves. And come back over here, you see a little blue badge, which tells you, lets you know that, hey, there's an update available. And, and it also shows you, you the different- the updates. Exactly, see the instances. So when you hover over this little blue badge in your assets panel, yeah. you can preview the change. I think you had it as an overlay. Exactly. It, uh, but yeah, like be careful how you're applying them. Make sure you apply it to the right layer. Yeah, she applied but, them to the wrong yeah, layer. I applied it onto the entire asset. So I'm not gonna use this, but I wanted to quickly show you that this is possible. Yeah. I'm gonna revert back my changes because I still wanna continue with that. But I put in some, um, it kind of lets you know what are the different things you can do with your app. Uh, re this is where it becomes nice to be have a design system already created um, so that you're not trying to, you can apply it across. Um, Howard Pinsky, Mail Sharif, when is dark mode coming? <laughs> I feel like every time I have come to this live, I have, uh, someone has asked that question. Yes. All right. It's coming. <laughs> when, the question is when. Um, so I just decided to use some of these like fun colors um, across, we help you be a better plant parent. And then maybe we can end with this little plus sign, which tells you add your plant over here. And it says, 
Um, and I want to maybe do it as get started add your plant today. Also, guys, don't be scared to kind of just um, add content. Uh, you can be a content strategist on the fly, but I highly recommend, um, at least if you don't have access to a content strategist, do a little bit of research. Try to uh, see what kind of language yeah. people are using. There are great articles online. Yeah. Uh, read up about it. Um, Gaitri and I definitely, we always do the first pass, but then. Yeah. <laughs> and then, <laughs> we I mean, engage it's super. content strategists to make sure that yeah. we, we comply with all the guidelines that internally we have at Adobe. Exactly. Um, all right, so let's see. Um, this is not completely final yet, but this is where um, you can kind of get somewhat of an experience. What's really nice about XD is it remembers what is the last setting you made and, and applies it mm -hmm. across. So maybe this could be an interesting splash screen. Catalog your plants in your home. Maybe this readability could be better here, yeah. but this animation still works. Um, you drag and like you diagnose what's wrong with them, I get like started that. and add your plan. And maybe that what you can do when as you click a, the plus, it will take you to the first. Yeah, exactly. Maybe oh, we didn't finish this screen, but we can definitely bring you to like a start yeah. off, start off screen where you're gonna add the assets that you want. Um, maybe the, I think we just need to add an image over here, and then we're pretty good to go. It always comes down to the last wire, no matter how <laughs> how prepared you come. Um, That's awesome. All right. Oh, I had made this change. That oh, yeah. That I Ariana was use. pointing out, don't forget to fix the error component. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Ariana. <laughs> this is why you don't work in isolation. You have a group of people. That's why, especially in design, um, you can definitely become blind to... Um, the smaller changes in your design. I'm gonna take this entire component and replace it because we made some changes over there. Like Sherry said, uh, XD, all, as long as your artboard is the same size, it will relatively place it in the same place. So I think we might actually have, all right, so when you add it, it goes in here. You hit the right click button. All right, so let's see how, how we're doing it. So you got the app, you get get to plant nani it's like a splash screen over here and we're using a little bit of auto animate i love this animation tool it looks so cool <laughs> i can't i can keep looking at this all day it's amazing so you can catalog your plants in your home so it tells you a little bit about your onboarding um these experiences um uh, and getting to know a little bit about the app you diagnose what's wrong with them and if you wanted to get started you hit the plus sign and it did I not? I should also there should be able to if you hit plus. Oh, it's a drag trigger. So remember to change it to tap. So here we are at that screen and you hit tap. It brings in you brings you into that tab screen. Um, if you put in all the information that you want mm -hmm. and you're ready, um, it should you confirm and it should take you to the next one. Did you wire it? I did, but I think I have a drag trigger over here. So I'm gonna fix that. <laughs> yeah. Make it tap. Um, you could start from here, yeah. And then you get tap. You, you can, can see all of them. Put, plug in, and there is more information. Love it. So I think we have like so. a strong foundation of the app laid out here. You can keep, of course, refining it. We talked about the onboarding screen. We talked about responsive resize, yeah. how you could take this and then further expand it to an iPad, for instance, yeah. layout, or or if you're like creating a mobile app web, uh, you could have it for multiple surfaces, the, web surfaces. The, the, the designer in me is like so bothered that by it <laughs> not being readable. Um, all right, but yeah, that's a quick like cheap trick on how to do an onboarding experience. I literally nice. have like 
one long image and I'm scrolling through different sections I love that. of it. And the artboard like acts kind of a mask. Because, exactly. Yeah. And auto animate just does like the magic. This magic. It just does the magic. <laughs> exactly. And you can have a cheap onboarding trick kind of over here in some of the apps that you are creating. Um, I think it creates a great experience. It's awesome. So there you go. We have a couple of and we have ten. We are gonna start reviewing your submissions in ten. Nine, eight, seven. <laughs> All right, yeah, guys. Like, right. I mean, if you're wrapping up, keep posting those links. Uh, we'll definitely take a look at them, and we're ready to give you some feedback. Awesome. All right, so let's start looking on Discord. Guy, two, are you ready? All uh, right, let's see where should we start. That is the three challenge. Da, 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 da. Thanks for seeing that, Ariana. Yeah. All right, let's start with this one. All right. So you go to the card. Yesterday was like, how could you add multiple? And now you add the address. That's neat. Go back. Oh. oh, you fix the address because yeah. it's like current location. Set the time. Delivery win. Finish oh. the order. Notify the restaurant. Woo! I Look love that. that. Animation. An auto animate. Yeah. And this is your upcoming order. Oh wait, so let's 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 look at screen by screen. Okay. So you start by you knowing the restaurant information, what are the this the address and there is a promotion that's ongoing over here mm -hmm. and then this is the different options soup options that you could choose you go to the cart those are the items that you have already added it tells you where this restaurant how far it is you could reset all the items or change to other restaurant i would assume if you change to other restaurant it would just reset your cart uh, yeah. right and then you could see the items, the description, how many of them, and you can edit. Obviously, if you want to delete it, maybe you should be able to delete that. And from choose your location, your current location. I like that. It's, did you see that? It's like it's saying telling you your current current location doesn't match the location you have entered. Do so. that again. I missed it a little bit. I I'm. Your country location address. Oh, that's great! Match. Yeah, like because sometimes, just... like, but sometimes it's intentional. I'm, I'm actually at work, yeah, and I want to send it to my home while I'm traveling. This would traveling. be really helpful. I don't know if you guys there, were there earlier. I was just telling Sharif about how my neighbor keeps ordering food to their house, and I'm clearly they're not at home; they're somewhere else. Um, so this would be really helpful for my neighbor. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but this is a great so suggestion. Send it to Guy Tree, please. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ship it, build it. <laughs> Um, All right, so you could see, you could click on the location, it will um, point you out to where you are currently and set time. For sure. On when you want to have that delivered. Do you have any feedback here? Mm -hmm. I think it's pretty neat. I like yeah, it. Yeah, it's a well made. Then it tells yeah. you the delivery fee. Maybe with the address change, the delivery fee would change according to how far you are. Got it. And then you click checkout. Tells you like you have that onboarding, auto animate, and then you could go back to your order page to review your upcoming order. I'd say something here, yeah, around six minutes. I was just gonna say like how far is it? Mm -hmm. Six minutes maybe, and start setting up the details table. and call the driver. I think the only feedback I would give you here is um, there's a lot of information here, and mm -hmm. I would. Um, you have already done it, and I think you're pretty talented to be able to put all this together so fast. Like, you guys saw me, like, oh, just two hours every day it doesn't even cut it. You've done a lot of work here, so I really commend you for that. Wait, who is this by also? It's by Jerry Lim. Jerry Lim, great work. Yeah, awesome work, Jerry um, The only feedback I would really give you is that maybe work a little bit on, like, especially on pages where there's a lot of information. Like um, this one, I'm sure you probably... Like the, even the first, yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's one. so much information over here. Um, 
I where think, could you have like maybe collapsible accordions like with more details if exactly, you want to see and or like even even with typography study a little bit about what information and i think sometimes i think this is under appreciated white space adds a lot of readability to your designs um i think you could definitely add a little more white space between the headers um i think some headers you don't really need i think uh, I don't need the header inf restaurant information. If you just tell me the name of the restaurant, I know what it is because I probably clicked on it from a screen before. Um, but I think this is really good work. Um, yeah, I was wondering even what do you think about the go back and go to cart? Yeah. Would you have them or I, would you? I, I think go back is definitely useful. Mm -hmm. But also a lot of the times you can rely on the phone system's own back features. I think these days phones also come with like this bottom nav bar, which always has like a back button. Mm. So that's something that you can do with device testing as Got well. It. Cool. But All great work. Right. This yeah, is no, a lot awesome of work. this is extensive work. That's really a lot of great like I love the layout, how the information and flow is going through and the animation obviously is pretty slick. All right. Snehal, I'm so glad. Um, I hope you can you tr decided to try XD. I hope you enjoy the tool. Um, I think XD is also XD is totally free. I think you'll find um, you must have already found some YouTube yeah. tutorials. So and again, the, go to Howard Pinsky. <laughs> go to Howard Pinsky or let'sxd.com or Google. Him. You'll find a lot he of videos. Give you all the tips that you want. And I also encourage you to participate in some of these daily challenges. Show us your work in progress. This is a safe space. We l we're trying to help you be yeah. better designers. Yeah, absolutely. As you can see, our work is not always finished either. This is a place for us to encourage you to play with the tool, it's, learn more. Yeah, it's always an iterative process. You keep on going, just share it with the broader creative community. I think Behance is an awesome space for that. You share your work and you get very constructive feedback and yeah. you just reiterate until you get for the sure. end desired flow. So this is from Shubham. And I think it was for day five where we were talking about how could you add things, items. So you can see here the menu with the cheese and then it gives you more details. I like that where he splits the yeah. details later because it's not something that necessary and then you can right. add the number of items. And from there you could see, here you could see all the, sorry, I'm trying to pause. You could see the details and overview of your order and the charges and delivery and then from here you could place the order. I like that. What do you think? Pretty well made. Um, do you want to check I think in that there? in micro interaction that you've created with adding the numbers and increasing the numbers, that's tricky to do and that's really well made. Yeah. Um, again, I think... Uh, and this check boxes. Right. Then adding one, two, and then it automatically adds down here the items and the, that's the total title. I don't, I don't know. I don't really have, I think it's great. I, I think it's really feedback. well made. You've taken a very specific, and it, that's the one of the Because you see the restaurant heart. here and like it's minimal, like he yeah. uses a lot of white space with the rating. How long does it take? Yeah, well then made. Then you can add some of whatever the pizzas there and when I you think go in also and one it. of the big things that I'm seeing on this app just from like a visual standpoint I'm seeing the add button too many times and then you have the add dot 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 I think you can compress that maybe mm. into a symbol or something and there's like, like here is an add and there's an add dot 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 mm -hmm. is that maybe for more details I think that's what he was trying, trying to, to target do. yeah like, but even because garlic bread it's just garlic bread you don't have yeah uh, other options with that, but he was trying to cater for, okay, what if you have more customizations? Customizations but, for Yeah, exactly. Pizzas. I think like it's overtaking the screen a little bit with like yeah. add, 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 add. Like I think it's- Maybe your, it's like they call it customize or stuff like that. Exactly, or have a symbol for it, but I think mm -hmm. it's really good. I think some of the filters that you have up there could go under a filter yeah. button. Um, just so that there is lesser information overload on the Got page. It. But I think it's pretty well thought through. Yeah. And the animations are oh the micro-interactions. Yeah. yeah. 
Very well thought Love through. Love that. Instructions, delivery instructions. I always put that in delivery instructions. I want extra mushroom and arugula <laughs> for my pizzas. That's how I love my pizzas. All right, cool. Let's jump on, see. Is that another Who's the one? next person? Or is this the... F uh, is it the same one or is it... Oh, look at that. Ah, look at that. Who is it by? Who is this by? It's... Well, but you made one. a yeah, Behance, you a Behance page. with more details. But I details. think this is a great lesson on how oh you can God. display some of your work, like make a user experience out of the way you even display yeah, I love that. Work. It's like it starts with delivering to where, and you search the restaurants, you see the offers, then the order screen, searching and filtering by different, you want to search your by price, delivery time, or waiting. Then you can have your campaigns and place your order. Great. That's pretty exhaustive. How long did it take you to do Great that? Great stuff. But I also, I think um, uh, Snehal and a couple of you guys who are new to XD, the daily challenges are a great way to build up a portfolio Exactly. Piece. So today is day six. I think we have a 10-day exactly. XD daily challenge. And by day 10, you should be able to have that awesome like, yeah, it's, portfolio. It's like and kind of like uh, sketch away a piece of time every day to that's how you build portfolio pieces and though yeah. that's the way uh, designers build up portfolio pieces to talk about their works and it, mm -hmm. at interviews and things let's look at this one by pinky and you can see always already setting up his kind of design system with the different character styles defined the color palettes love that and then he could order, has history. order history. I think that was in challenge number two. That was okay. in order one. So you could see the order history. You could repeat the order again if you want the same order. That's neat. Sometimes I, quite often I would actually do the same order over great, and over again. Great use of white space over yes. here, as we were talking about earlier. It almost makes it easier to read uh, when there is more white space, which yeah, kind of frames the content. It's pretty simple, like the items, whatever you've ordered. I'm curious what happens when you actually click repeat order. <laughs> Does it take you? Should give you a discount every time you repeat <laughs> an order. Yeah, we could have loyalty points in there. Exactly. All right, let's move on. How many more minutes do we have? We still have some time. Also, if you guys have some questions that you'd like us to answer a little bit about the design process here at Adobe, um, we're happy to answer them. Of course, like even share some of your work in progress that you've created with us. All right, let's watch. Oh, this is Melody. We've seen Melody's work. I have awesome. not seen have the you, final you haven't version seen of it. it? No. Uh, let me show you. So We've been seeing Melody a little you bit. You have an overlay. Then you could content help. You could see your current order. Oh, so what happens if you have a wrong address? Instead of contacting help, how could you update the address on the fly? Got it. Instead of going to help and support. So Got that it. was Melody's approach of, like from here, you could say contact help instead of calling them. Right. And Got put it. in the current wrong address. Order. I'm sure that there, I think the little piece that I find missing over there is that there needs to be some kind of information telling me that what the cutoff is, like that this option might be disabled um, after a certain period of time mm -hmm. because you can't change the order address. Oh, wow. We have 41 slides. Wow. <laughs> Who's Could this by? Give you for that? It's N -N 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 for <laughs> whoever N -N 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 is on. Uh, tell us your name on Behance. That would be awesome. So that we could refer to, or we could re keep referring as N, -N, -N, -N. Um, All right. So you could see here the screen. I love that scroll over. You could see the current. So location. for some of you who might not know, this is the XD um, preview link that you can share from within the app. Yeah. Um, this is a great and space where you can ch like, sh if you share this link, uh, you can make it private. And you can add only. comments. I could start adding comments and say. Great work. Yeah. Awesome work. You could leave feedback and they could go resolve or reply 
to that comment. So it's a great flow for if you have others who are reviewing uh, your work so that they could leave comments in context of the designs. Exactly. And simply the way Gaitri was saying, is like just go to share, share for review. And you then can, you could create you a can link. You can create a password behind it so anybody who has a link but yeah. needs just a password. I think what this user has done is just make it a public link. Um, so it's accessible. You can gather feedback from any of your collaborators. They don't have to have an XD account even. Mm -hmm. They can comment as a guest user. Mm -hmm. So it's a pretty flexible system. Um, I really like the layout of this app for sure. Yeah. Um, it's a little small, so I'm not able to see it. So, so you can make expand. it actually even yeah, from there. Yeah, you can do it full screen. Yeah. Um, kind of interact with the app. Quick bites. So it, as you can see here, this is a hotspot. It tells you where you should click next. And you can see the icon even changing from a cursor to a hand. So when I click on it, it should take me to the next screen. I don't know, I'm not sure. And then yeah, you could add, it. once you add, you could decide like, hey, those are the custom options I have want. And this is super useful. You can turn on the hotspots in your share yes. tab. Um, so when your collaborators, if they've not, of course, if they've not made the app and they're not close to the app, they might not know where to click. Koreana. And then from here, you can add. So I think, yeah. So your cus this is the customization yeah. of the order. This is very neat. This looks very iOS that. friendly. Yeah, and then after that, you had fried chicken. You can add order. It's processing. It's done. Nice and so. Now can when you you're tell? Ready. Do you know what the Discord community is? This is where people are coming and posting all their exactly. Links, so links they are. yeah. So we have the Discord XD community where people come in and share with them. And their how designs. how can people get on it? Is we it have, on Slack? Yeah. Or? So do we? Do we have the link for the Discord? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's been it's posted a couple of times yeah. on the chat, but I was And just we have curious. mentors there, so Chris is there, Melody's there, Peter, Tim, Howard Pinsky. We have many mentors there who would just review the designs and, and give them some feedback. Like, this is great. I actually didn't know about this. It's I've pretty seen people awesome, yeah. talk about it, but this is pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. All right. Yeah, I really love those designs. And then you check out and you're done. Love that. Okay. Let's see this one. That's from Rashid. Okay. So oh, I think this is an improvement location. from yesterday. Oh, yeah, right? Great to see that you're Love continuing today. Yeah. Really appreciate it. <laughs> now you have the ratings. Okay. Uh, this, they look delicious. Oh, now it's lunchtime for us. <laughs> okay. It, okay. Caviar bloom. I think I think one of the feedback you gave yesterday was around those tabs on top. Yeah. What was your feedback? It I think make like, it a little bit bigger. They don't, they don't, I, it seems like this. They have made it bigger so that your finger yes. can at least uh, you don't hit the wrong button unintentionally. So I think that's definitely been made. Um, I think this is definitely a good work in progress. You started yes. putting some pieces together. I would encourage you to use um, the guides that we showed you today a little bit more and think about your content. It seems to me that you've uh, kind of put together some really good pieces and screens and you have a good handle on how to prototype. Mm -hmm. But I, I mean, if you want to make this a piece in for your portfolio and continue with this exercise, I would definitely kind of add one, a little bit more content in, but this is a great start. I know getting this far, even if you're using XD. It is a great start. Uh, a and new the, XD user is not easy. The colors, what do you think about the choice of colors when you're, do I think, you have, would you have the same color background or do you feel it's? I think it's working right now for sure. For those like three, four things that you've used, mm. I think it's, I think the color palette is pretty great. Um, I wonder if it changes by cuisine or exactly by category or cuisine. Exactly a type of cuisine or yeah. like re or like maybe restaurants pay a premium mm -hmm. to brand their That's use a great their brand idea. color to yeah. use their so brand colors. So that they colors. have their own brand color. 
Um, that's actually a indi good indication of a desi good design system. If is is how many time how much you can kind of like modify it with like little changes. Yeah, it's you all like about like building themes. that consistent, cohesive system that actually helps your user navigate and know your brand identity. I think so yeah. more than anything. It's like it's yeah. a very distinctive thing about your brand. And when you define those palettes, I know, okay, when I'm using Adobe products, it's easy to me to know, it's like, oh, those are all related. I have the same right. experience. I know where to go and how to navigate. Yeah, through. you don't always have to stick your brand at logo on everything you can use. Yeah. And it's also a lot to helps like expedite color. the process. I mean, right. when you're building over and over, you don't want to start creating different color types because people are going to, or color definitions or components because people are going to start getting confused and you're right. going to sure. keep recreating the same button over and over. For sure. So it helps so a lot with the core elements. Should we take a look at this again? I think yeah. we had looked at it yesterday. Did I wonder if there it's were more Jake. changes. I remember seeing, this is the sweet. No, I think that's a new one. Oh, no, this is the one yeah, but it's a, I think it's a continued updated. flow. Yeah, it's yeah. more updated. Let's see. How can I make it full screen? There yeah, let's, let's start it over again. So you place the order, you add your details. Billing experience. And then you confirm the purchase. Okay, I like okay. that. <laughs> Oh, this is a little bit like I have to say morbid a little bit. Just like your tooth covered in sweets, oh, like cavity. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's pretty cute, but I'm sweet also tooth. Really, like I'm, I'm watch a out, you have a sweet tooth coming over. <laughs> this is pretty cool. I like that. I yeah. like that little like um, in the end that you put in something that was um, kind of I, I forget what the kind of the business term for it is like it's like the delightful moment of yeah. like you're not just interacting with an app it has it, it gives it some kind of like an human uh value yeah a little bit so this is cool and i feel it's like the closed loop feedback is like hey you're done like celebrate yeah. this moment and yeah just wait for your treat while I mean, it's on the way. I mean, I don't have anything against the little green checkbox because it tells me something is done, yeah. especially if I'm multitasking it. I kind of just like know that I've closed the loop. Sometimes I feel like the green checkbox, I agree with you, and I feel it's more used for productivity things. It's yeah. like, oh, you got the task done and it's confirmed and you moved on. Which is and why I think it also makes sense that this app is specifically about ordering desserts, which is yeah. kind of like more fun and like yeah. you can kind of have fun with it. But whereas if you're just ordering food, which people do, I think twice or thrice a week every day, and it's yeah. probably along with five other things, that green check mark works. But for this specific scenario where you're ordering a cake, I think this is great use of um, like a la end splash screen. Yeah, this strawberry cheesecake. Oh my god! <laughs> Thank you for Thank you so much for that. Going and improving your design. Jake, once that's more. that's awesome work. All right, do we have any more going on here? I think that's it for our submissions today, guys. If you you could keep submitting your stuff on Discord and. We're going to keep reviewing your feedback tomorrow and the days after for all the XD challenges. Wanted to show you one thing, actually. So remember, Gayatri has shared with me the plants that she's been working on. The plants that she's been Yeah, Plant Nanny. So if I'm actually building a separate flow of Plant Nanny, I could just link to it. It will bring in, it should bring in all the link assets. Hmm. This is when Wait, do you have it saved? The yeah. Link assets? Let me actually try. So what are you trying to do? I'm just trying to link to the file that you shared with me. Uh go ahead. Let me just quit XD. Gives me All right. Because I have multiple builds of XD, the future builds of XD, <laughs> and what's going to be delivered. So I don't know which one I'm using. And so let's go back here. If we switch back to my screen, I yeah, can and I also. Click on it, and here you are. As okay, you can there see, you go. 
in my oh this is my screen uh, so this is on my link. screen you could see i've linked all of them i could start using you have like a the same dual screen going on yeah i could have the components start using them the same way or start applying colors or say i'm gonna make this i'm a, gonna make some changes button. here so we can have a design party and she could start making changes while i'm actually working on stuff let's actually create an an iphone maybe i'll make some more components and available for you to work with yeah that would be great um there i added a component um there we go and it And you could change the blue color maybe for the the water droplet. Yeah. I've used it already here. And maybe you want to move to a darker blue. Yeah, maybe. Then say water eleven. Oh, this is a cool setup. You can see what I'm doing, and you can see what you're doing too. I didn't know this was happening. Did you say the changes? Yeah. There you All go. Right. All right, so I think we are wrapping up. Um, all right, so Gaitri, thank you so much Absolutely. for showing us today how to work with, uh, how to design for any screen. We've, let's wrap up, like we've worked, we've shown how we work with your design process and how you think about actually jumping from just ideas and researching the problem statement and how you get that to sketches and then jumping into XD to actually build the um, design um, to, to prototype your designs. And we've used repeat grids, you've used the plugins, responsive resize to responsively resize for multiple screens. Are there any departing thoughts that you want to um, share with I everyone think out there? The only thing I would say is that like you saw us working with it, just get in there and start messing around with it. XD is free. If you have some questions, of course, post in that Slack channel that we just showed you. Um, I'm going to post all these <laughs> links on my Twitter so that if any of you who uh, I referenced about a talk for on YouTube, I referenced an article that is about designing for any screen and isn't it isn't just about resizing something it's also intentional about what Absolutely. is that medium being used for and um yeah uh that those are some of my depart departing thoughts um and have fun with it and play around with prototyping and design don't wait to be finished with your design to start prototyping. Yeah. and just even share with us work in progress like as you've seen we just go through it it's an iterative process you never have it perfect from the first time uh, you could reach out for us to Twitter for Gaitri or myself on, uh, um, I think, I can't remember my Twitter handle, Sharif underscore Asaf or Sharif Asaf, <laughs> one of them. And then, or on the Adobe XD uh, major Twitter, and we're going to respond to all your queries over there. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you so for much for tuning things. us for two straight days. I hope you found it helpful. We really loved how you are engaged with us and reviewing your portfolios and your Absolutely. submissions. Absolutely. Right. And we'll be back next week. Yeah, Other back. people, not yeah. us. <laughs> the answer keep going every single day. All right. All right. Thank you. See you guys. See you guys.